Hi everyone, and another meal in the old allergen oven. What we're doing today, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do a roast joint of pork today um, in this here oven and show you how well a joint of pork comes up with all the crackling and the bits. We're going to do our potatoes and everything else. Um, so, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Jan and she's going to take you through it. Okay. The usual hygiene applies with cooking with pork, make sure it's defrosted, if you've frozen it already make sure it's defrosted, um, make sure that you keep everything clean around it, once you've handled it wash your hands, all the usual stuff with pork. When you get your pork often the butcher will score it for you. Um, this hasn't been scored by the butcher, we did some but it wasn't enough so I get a very sharp knife so make sure your knife is sharp to do this bit and then I just score it again because it's important if you want your crackling crackly and be careful not to cut through your string here uh, that you keep you, your, your bits of fat along here are quite thin and that you can pull them out so you know you get your, your knife and then you put it down like that so you've made that a bit thinner there make sure it's not joined at the end because you actually want it separated like that. Split them out and then the next thing you have to do is make sure it's really really dry because you don't want it wet. The trick to this is it's dry. Okay so you put your salt on Okay, and rub it in. You want a little bit but obviously I know all health, we're all health conscious with the salt thing so just be careful, you don't overdo it, but you do want it because it will help dry it out. Okay, and then you're going to open up your flour. Don't put your hand in it because you've just been handling pork and you want to get some flour on there. So again, that is just to help dry it out. This is something my dad taught me to do and oh my goodness me, it works every time. And we've now discovered we can do this in the halogen oven. So. A bonus. When you cut through, don't cut through the actual meat itself if you can avoid it. Uh, I'll give you an example there, I've gone through to the meat, so just try and be very careful not to go through to the meat, otherwise it will dry out. And when you've done that, just a tad more on the top of salt, and that is ready to go. Looking good. The halogen oven, you've heard it going in the background, that's been heating up nicely, top heat, splash of oil in the bottom, a little bit of olive oil, not a lot, but just enough so that when I get the pork and slide it in, it doesn't stick to the bottom of the glass dish. Okay, so I'm making sure the fat's all spread. Going back in, full pelt for now, for about five minutes. Just keep an eye, depends on the size of your pork, how long you cook it, go by your guidelines on your packaging, the crackling on there should be ready in about five five minutes. But we'll keep an eye on that and we'll judge that. We just have to adjust times as you go along. So you can see that's about six minutes. Okay, I'm now going to turn the halogen oven down. There you are. You can see the crackling's gone nicely. So I'm really pleased with that. Sorry, I'm just going to move that across there. And then I'm just going to put, because I don't want the pork to dry out. So I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of oil over the pork itself, not over the crackling. Whatever you do, don't drizzle it over the crackling shall make it go soggy again. So I'm just drizzling it over the pork just so that it keeps it moist. Alright. While I was get doing while that was getting ready, I'm getting my potatoes ready and I'm gonna try something today. I haven't tried um, the, the carrots like this, so I've been chopping the carrots. When I chop potatoes, I may have mentioned this before in another video, I always chop them so you get three. Some people do them in half, but you get, you get a better potato, roast potato, if you cut them in three. Or you can go down again, of course, if you like, we like really small potatoes, so I've cut them again on some of them. But they cut, they, they're better if they're exposed on these two bits. These bits go soft and, and really crisp up around the outside. I'm going to put these into parboil together just for um, probably about 10-15 minutes until they're going soft. So that's the way I'm going to do it today. I haven't done it like this before so I don't know how it's going to turn out but we'll give it a go. 
Righty ho. Now, what I'm doing with this, I popped the space in because I thought that the crackling was going a little bit too hard and brown. So it's about another 10 minutes in. You can see the juices are coming out of the pork. So I'm going to keep a close eye because we want the pork to still cook, but we don't want that crackling to go too hard and burn. So I popped the spacer in. Again, it depends on the size of your joint as to whether you put the spacer. Now here's the vegetables I've been boiling. You can see the potatoes are just going crumbly. So they're actually ready now for me to drain the water off and they're getting ready to go in with the pork. Right, I've drained the water out. I'm now going to distress them, which what I mean is I'm just going to do that and shake them around not too much, don't want them to all crumble away. But all those little bits come off and then go in the hot fat and they go crispy and absolutely gorgeous. Okay, back to the pork then. It's had about half an hour now, so I don't want that crackling. Whatever happens mustn't go in the fat because otherwise it'll just go soggy. But I do just want to turn it so that we we are cooking down on this part now, so it's cooking right the way through. So I've taken the ring off because I can't work with the ring on because you, you burn your hands. So we're all back, it's still on 200 degrees. Pop that down, that's just so I'm cooking it through from that angle now. So I've popped them in, all the oil, all the fat out of the pork is going into the bottom of the tray there. What I've done is I've popped the potatoes in and I've got butternut squash in there and I've got carrots and I'm leaving all the crumbly bits because they'll taste awesome. Just roll that around so that it gets covered in fat. So basically you're making sure everything's got fat on it. I'm going to add a little bit more olive oil because I want to make sure this doesn't dry out. So I'm just going to let that run down there and then just drizzle these and then I'm going to put a little bit of sorry I haven't got it out ready Naughty me. a little bit of my seasonal I use this all the time just sprinkle it over and on the pork taste it already and that's it pop the lid back on and carry on cooking. I'm leaving it at that angle because I want to cook that piece through there. So it's going to need at least another 40 minutes, but I'm just going to keep an eye on it. I want the spacer out for now because I want to get the potatoes brown, but I've got to keep my eye on that pork that it doesn't dry out. Right, I've tested my pork's cook. You can see it is. I turned it around the other way so that this side will get cooked as well. I'm now going to take that out to rest, turn it up a little bit higher, and make sure the potatoes are covered in or in oil. Right, that looks ready to dish up. It's going lovely, all nice and crispy and crunchy. I've got my apple sauce out. I always make my apple sauce, batch it up, freeze it down in little pockets like that in tin foil. I pop that in the microwave, then I've got my apple sauce. So, Alan's over there cutting the pork up now. We've got the stock ready for the gravy. So. Just get the last bit done, then we're going to eat. Can't You've pinched some already, I can <laughs> see. Just, just, just have to make sure it's all right. Here we are then, our pork's all been cut by Alan, and here's our crackling. No good for you, no good at all for you. Fattening, but taste delicious. No, he's eating it. Right, well, here we go. <laughs> sure you can't join me, but um, you know, it's one of those things. A little bit of gravy and we'll be away with the mixer. Um, lovely dinner. Um, just enjoy it really once it's done. Um, forget that, you know, pork crackling isn't that good for you. But see what, it's absolutely tastes superb. Wow. <laughs> okay, all my videos you know where to come. Derek and 33. Thanks very much for watching everybody. See you again next time. Bye bye.